what is a pressure regulated spray head and the top three questions about pressure regulated spray heads in this video. I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy and you're watching Sprinkler TV. Today I'm joined by Kevin Battistoni. Kevin is a rep for Hunter. Kevin, welcome. Yeah, uh, good to be here. Thanks for having me, Andy. Yeah, glad you're here. We're going to answer these questions. And before we do, I'd like to ask you sort of your role at Hunter, uh, what you do, where you live and and uh, all of that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I am the Midwest sales manager for Hunter Industries based out of the Chicagoland area. Uh, I've been with the organization for a little over 15 years now. Um, so I call on our professional channel, both our distribution partners, as well as contractors that execute the function of installing underground automated irrigation. Um, and yeah, before that, I spent about a decade in distribution and my family's been in the contracting side since 1928. So I am uh, about as sprinkler nerdy as you can get. Awesome. Fantastic. So we got some authority here. So let's start, Kevin, with question number one is what is a pressure regulated spray head? Um, a pressure regulated spray head essentially is a head that regulates reducing pressure com coming to the head, reducing it down so that the nozzle in the orifice that omits the water is at the precise pressure desired for the maximum efficiency and how evenly it lays down water. Okay. So when you say reduce pressure, does that mean if you have 80 pounds of pressure coming in through the pipe, through the valve, down the lateral line to the sprinkler, that it will regulate, let's say, 80 pounds down to 40 pounds? Correct. Correct. They're um, inside of the, the stem, the portion of the spray head that pops up that the nozzle sits on top of. Inside of there, we have something called a choke point, um, and it's variable. OK, so we need at least a 10 PSI differentiating factor from the pressure coming to the head to what we desire at the nozzle. So we can regulate at 40 PSI and we can regulate at 30 as well. Based upon the inlet pressure coming to it, if it's 60 PSI or 80, that variable choke point will open and close accordingly to make sure that the nozzle only receives that 40 PSI or 30 PSI. Again, we make them in two different flavors. Okay. So when we say a pressure regulated spray body, what we're talking about is a sprinkler, a spray sprinkler that inside that body is a pressure regulator. So I happen to have a traditional pressure regulator. There you go. Here. Yeah. That's one of our very own. Yep. This is a Hunter 30 PSI pressure regulator that you could put anywhere in your sprinkler system. But this one I believe is designed to go at the valve. And so what you're saying, Kevin, or what I'm hearing is that a contraption or a device like this is now uh, smaller in size and manufactured into the sprinkler. Yeah, 100%. And, um, you know, July is smart water month. We're trying to be as efficient as possible with that precious natural resource to give us that net result of nice lush green plant material. And oftentimes with without pressure regulation, the nozzles are not doing the best job they can in terms of efficiency and how evenly we lay down water. So we test this stuff extensively to figure out what that precise pressure needs to be so that we're laying down water as evenly as possible, preserving the precious natural resource. And that happens now right inside of the sprinkler head, as you just described. Awesome. Fantastic. So let's go to question number two. We started, you started to answer this and I didn't, I didn't stop you, but let's talk about how a pressure regulated spray head actually works. Yeah, sorry, I put the put the wagon in it's front of the horse or the horse in front of the wagon. Um, so inside of that spray head stem, we have what we call the choke point um, and it varies, right? So if it tapers down inside to determine the how much it opens or closes depends on the pressure coming to the head itself. So just you didn't ask this question, but I believe it's relevant on this very uh, in this in this segment. If you don't have the desired pressure coming to the head, the regulator is not magic. It will not increase the pressure and bring it up to optimal. So it's only going to perform if what's coming to the head is greater than what's desired at the nozzle. And we have to be at least 10 pounds of pressure higher coming to the head. Than what what is the than what the regulator is actually set for. 
if that makes sense. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so let me repeat that. Number one, the only way to increase pressure is with a pump or with gravity. A Correct. pressure regulator can't increase it. It's a pressure reducer, which I don't know why we just don't call it a pressure reducing spray head. Agreed. Anyway, Agreed. it's a regulator. It reduces pressure because the only way to increase is with gravity or a pump. And then the, what, what was the next thing you, you mentioned? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. There. Oh, no, no problem. We, we were talking about having a differentiating factor of 10 oh, PSI. That's right. So if um, you have 46 PSI, the regulator won't make it 40. You have correct. to have at least yeah, it's, it's not enough of a variant. We need double digits in a variant in, in pressure for it to actually for for that choke point to actually be effective. So that makes sense. So if you're a super sprinkler nerd and you're out there with a you know um, testing your pressure and you want to see if Hunter products work and you're testing it and it doesn't seem to add up, it could be that there's not a 10 PSI differential. So it won't work unless there's a 10 PSI differential. Found that one out that the hard sense. way about 10 years ago with the, myself and Steve Hovland, who's one of our product managers, and we were doing a, a college field day and we couldn't figure out why after the pressure regulator, we, we were still had the same pressure. And um, turns out we didn't have that 10 PSI differential. So I think clarity on that is really important for uh, the general public uh, managing expectations. Yeah. So if you're out there with a gauge testing your pressure, keep that in mind. So and that's actually a good lead into question number three. What PSI should a sprinkler head be at? So that's there's a, there's three parts to that answer. We'll we'll address it in the most relevant one first, which with a spray head universally. And so we can describe to your audience what a spray head is. It's short radius irrigation. Um, when you see a spray head coming on coming on at your yard, you're going to see the entire pattern instantly. So there's no rotation happening if it pops up and you know we're looking at anywhere from two feet out to about 18, uh, half, thirds, three quarters, fulls. Universally, every manufacturer through extensive testing has decided that the optimal pressure for a spray nozzle is 30 PSI. That's where we get, now I'm gonna get geeky on you, the highest distribution uniformity. That's an industry way of saying efficiency. That's where we universally across all manufacturers see the best efficiency. Now, if we go a step beyond that, the spray nozzle in general um, is not the most efficient way for short ir uh, radius irrigation. We have a product called the MP Rotator, which is a stream rotor we'll speak on uh, later, but the optimal pressure for an MP Rotator to give us the maximum distribution or uniformity or efficiency is actually 10 PSI higher at 40 pounds of pressure. And then beyond that, for a rotor, a rotary sprinkler head, now we're talking beyond 20 feet, you know, in some cases, if it's a sport field, um, We've got synthetic turf rotors that spray 167 feet. But with those in what we call a three-quarter inch rotor, which would be your 20 foot to about 40 foot spacing, that particular head, you'll see the highest distribution uniformity with a regulation of 45 pounds of pressure. Okay. So what I'm hearing is between 30 and 50, i.e. 45, so 30 to 50 PSI, that's the optimum range for residential irrigation pressure. 100%. Perfect. Okay. Last question. <laughs> Do you even need a pressure regulated spray head? That, that's a great question. And um, it's <laughs> living in the Chicagoland area. Um, I can tell you in general, static water pressure, meaning when nothing's running is typically not any higher than 50 pounds of pressure. Now, when water travels through the backflow prevention device, there's a substantial loss in pressure. If it's a RPZ, you're going to lose 10 to 12 pounds of pressure. I always say at your home, if you want to run this test, you want to go to the furthest sprinkler head from your point of connection, right? Where the water's coming out of your house. And if you have north of 30 pounds of pressure on your spray head at the furthest head, well, it's operating, okay, mind you. And we we have devices that you can, you can get through Andy to actually test at head working pressure. Then um, if it's north, if it's 40 or higher, you know, again, we need that 10 differential, then I would say it's worth it. But in the Chicagoland area, unless there's a booster pump on the system or we have a different source of water, um, I have not found a single application where we're north of 30 PSI 
out in the field. What about um, regulation? I understand some states, I don't know all of them, let's just say California, because I know that's a known state, is regulating that the if you were to go buy a sprinkler right now, it must be a pressure regulated spray head. That, yes, correct. There are, we, we've begun to see that started two or three years ago. Um, there, there are almost, uh, I believe, 10 states in the United States now that require pressure regulation on, on spray heads before they're installed. Give you some comparative data. Four hours from my home in Chicago, I cover St. Louis Metro. The static water pressure down there in the suburbs is 150 pounds of pressure. So just traveling 300 miles, the pressure increases 100 PSI, whereas pressure regulation at the spray head is uber relevant in a market like that. So you really need to just take a look at A, local codes or statewide coding. And then two, if you don't know, you're just guessing. So you need to put a gauge on your sprinkler heads and see what's happening out in the field to know whether or not your yard's actually going to benefit from pressure regulation. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kevin. Appreciate your time. Of course. And if we can help you with any of your hunter irrigation needs, sprinklers, valves, controllers, drip, MPs, stakes, let us know. We're happy to help. You can reach us by phone, chat, email, text message. And until the next Sprinkler Supply Store product overview, happy sprinkling. We'll talk to you then. <laughs>